Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be looking at something very interesting to me. So this guy named Ben Swift, he reached out to me a couple days ago and he told me about this project that he's been working on for a while and he wanted to sponsor a video and showing this project to everyone. And I took a look and I'm actually really impressed and I'm, I really want to show this to everyone because I think it's a thing with a lot of potential. So I would call this like an open beta. You can obviously see that there's some errors, there's issues, the application's not perfect, but I could see this becoming something awesome. So basically the idea of this is that you can edit the UI of your application from your phone. How this works, we will explore a lot when we actually open up the SDK and start programming ourselves, but it's basically everything, all of our UI will be uploaded to a server. Within this server, you can go and access each of your UI elements and edit them on the application. Edit the constraints, edit the color, add an image, do whatever you want, all right here. And also something important to note here, this works with UI kits. It doesn't work with Swift UI quite yet. I think he's probably gonna work on that, but it just works with UI kit at the moment. So first off, this is his website. It's uidesignmanager.com. And this is where you can like read up a little bit on it and whatnot. But here it has access to the SDK on GitHub and also the application. So first things first, this uh, SDK, it's free for everyone. But the problem is, you can't really do much with just the SDK. So downloading the application uh, and working with that, it's actually $14 a month. But with this also, if you wanna just play around with things, get, get to see how things are done, it's one month free. Uh, so go ahead and check it out, no risk. Go and, and just play around with this thing. But yeah, in order to use the application, actually use this service, you need to have the subscription. And this is all for a reason because all of this information that you're plugging into the application is being uploaded to the server, being managed there. And so there's costs involved. But enough talking about like this stuff, let's go ahead and start implementing this stuff into an application that we can actually play with it, work with it and see how it works. So in order to get started with this application, let's go ahead and save Xcode, create new project, create a single way application, product name, I'll call this manager, but you can call it whatever you want. And once we're inside of here, now that we have the project created, if we head over to the website, you should be able to see that we need to get started. So how do we get started? We head over to the GitHub page that holds the SDK. So in order to import this, we have to use CocoaPods. If you don't know what CocoaPods is, just go ahead and say CocoaPods.org and that'll actually show you a process of how to get CocoaPods inside of your application. But we're gonna skip that process. So with this, we actually wanted to install this SDK that we have into our application. So in order to do that, we're gonna close out of our project here, which is saved in my documents and we're gonna open up Terminal. We're gonna say ls cd documents and let's go right into manager and with this we're going to say pod init to initialize a pod file head over to our documents go to manager here and once we're in here let's open up that pod file and we're going to go into our pods and we're going to say pod ui design manager that's the pod name of the sdk once we have that there command us to save and we're going to just say pod install and there you have it. Very quick process. Let's go ahead, open up the manager in our Xcode workspace now. So now that we have our application, we wanna go ahead and import our UI design manager. Now, this happened to me the last time as well. If it doesn't recognize it, we need to go over to our manager, go into our build settings or build phases here, and then copy link binary with libraries and go ahead and add, um, Alamo Fire and UI Design Manager. Once we have that, it should be able to recognize everything inside of our app delegate. So now if we were to run this again, and there you go, that's just something you have to like troubleshoot every now and then, but now it's imported into the application. All right, so now that that's done, inside of our did finish launching with options, um, we're gonna go ahead and follow the instructions here on GitHub and it says initial setup required. All right, so here we say UI Design Manager dot set passkey. So we're gonna go ahead and say UI Design manager.set in the which we're going to say pass key and we're going to give it whatever key we want it can be whatever name that we want i'm just going to call this manager test one or something like that so it's going to take that pass key and it's going to upload it to the server that they have that is basically the the simple part of setting it all up now let's set up our ui in order to do that let's go over to our view controller dot swift first of all import ui design manager with this, um, it actually creates some UI elements. So we're gonna say var label will be equal to Z UI label. 
open and close parentheses. Then with this, we want to take that label and we're going to say self.view.addSubView in which we're going to add our label. And then we say label dot configure and this is something important and kind of a bug that I found out so it has two different types of configure it has this first one that doesn't have too many things and then it has the second one that has a whole lot of stuff inside of it and you want this one because if you do the one that doesn't have too many things inside of it it actually crashes so that's probably a bug I already notified him and hopefully there's a fix for this but for this, let's go ahead and start configuring our application. So for the name here, this is something that's actually going to be accessed inside of the application, like a reference. So we want this name to be like label one or something like that. With the source is we're gonna make this equal to self. Source parent, we're gonna say self.view. Uh, left, right, just make all of that zero. And then for center X and center Y here, we're gonna say false and false. We're setting all of this as zero because I want to set this up inside of the application, show that off a bit. So now if I were to build and run this, you should be able to see practically nothing inside of our application. But if we were to head into the application, first you need to log in, do everything, and then you get to this screen. Uh, you're going to go over to the bundle ID, put in the bundle ID of your application here. In this case, it's perks. Dot manager and then for the pass key this is the same pass key that we put inside of our app delegate so this is going to be manager test one we're going to enter that in and once we have that you should be able to actually see that it's already found our label one inside of there so if we were to click that now we can start editing it so this is kind of part of the buggy part of the application still but in order to work with this we need to center the x center the y and then we can start working with it so first we can make our width and height. So I'm gonna make this like a width of 50 or a height of 50 and a width of 200. There you go. Let's center it on the X. Have a block our height and width and then we can save that. And actually, no. So this is part of the, the it being buggy. Like it's hard to tell what exactly you did wrong. And it's hard to tell exactly what I'm doing wrong that I can't save. Uh, these constraints or whatever I'm doing with these applications. So it looks like I'm missing something. There we go. So now I locked in all of the constraints. Now we can save and replace. And if we were to go to our application, you can still see it didn't update, but build and run again. It should be able to grab our information that we just sent from the application. And there we have it. As you can see, it doesn't look exactly, it doesn't here, but it's keeping this constraints. It's 263 above. 213 below. We're going to center it on the y-axis, center it on the x-axis, and we're going to save and replace that. Now, yeah, let's build and run this again. And now you can see that we have the label, the exact size that we wanted it, and the exact way that we wanted it. Now, if I were to, I can also go in here and do some text editing. So if I wanted this label to say something else, I can be like, hello world, or something like that. I can do that. You can also change the size of the font that you want. And also you can edit the color. So you can just click on this if you want a pink, green, blue, whatever. Now if I were to build and run this again, you should be able to see a light blue now. Now I can see this having many implications actually. So let's go ahead and try adding a few other elements. For instance, let's try and make a UI table view controller. And within this, we're gonna try and creating a, a couple labels as well. So we're going to say view did load, number of rows in section. I'm going to return just the static number of three. And then inside of this, we're going to say cell for row at index path. Now we can start adding some things into our cell. So I'm going to say var cell will be equal to a UI table view cell. We're going to return that cell and let's add in here. We're going to say let our image equal our ZUI image view, open close parentheses, and then we're going to say image view dot configure, and we're going to configure it with all those things. Let's give it a name of image one. The source of this will be our self. Our source parent could be our cell. We're going to make all the rest of this zero, and then our fallback image. We do need a fallback image inside of here, but I'm just going to leave that blank. I'll just make this a let cell. And now if we were to build and run this, we should be able to actually see this uh, inside of our application first. Oh, and also I forgot, we're not working with Swift UI. Okay, we need to go into our main.storyboard as well. We need to go over to the view controller here. So we need to change our class here. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
exit out of that, we're going to um, put in here a UI table view controller. We're going to make this the initial view controller. And we also got to give it the reference name. So this is going to reference our view controller so that it can reference this file. Now build and run that. So as you can see, it does look like we need an inactive image inside of our application, otherwise it crashes. So I'm just going to add in there something. So let's take this image, let's put this inside of our assets. Uh, once that's in there, uh, it's called background. So I'm gonna go into my viewcontroller.swift, give this the name of background. Oh, I'm doing something stupid. All right, so we also need to say cell.add subview in which we add our image view. <laughs> There we go, now that should work. Now the build has run, it succeeded, but as you can see, we don't have really have any image loading up. Um, so now we need to work with our constraints over here. The image has loaded up, so I'm gonna log in again and let's see what happens. Why well, didn't it do that? It unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. Oh, the network connection was lost. But it looks like to me that this isn't an error on my part. This is actually an error uh, within the network connection. Um, so I'm trying to figure this out but there should definitely be like a fallback. If this doesn't work, it's going to do this because not everyone's gonna have a network connection all the time. So that's something very important to note here. Yeah, it's still giving me that response. Maybe if I switch this for something else, maybe it'll give me a different response. Or right, let's see if we can get that label that we created earlier actually working again. So we're gonna say ZY label, label dot configure. We're gonna configure this whole thing up. All right, now we say cell dot add sub view in which this is going to be our label. Build and run that. And we should be able to see at least like the label that we have. Yeah, you can see that's loading up. That's a bit, that's normal. All right, so that looks like to be an issue with the image view. I'll report that to him and hopefully he can get that working. But yeah, so at least the ZUI label works. Let's try it with something else. ZUI button, maybe. And let's just give this the name of button one. The ZUI button, open close parentheses, and it looks like the configure is the same. We just needed to change the name. Um, yeah, we probably change this name, this label name, but that's all right. We're just, it's just for testing purposes. So build around that. And let's see if we get that inside of our application and if we can actually mess around with that a little bit. Yeah, so now the button's actually here in my application. I can go ahead and I can mess around with this if I want to. Let's try and add some text in here. I'm gonna say, just like, what up? Add that right in there. And we're gonna make the size a little bit different. So I'm gonna make this size like 700, or no. <laughs> Let's make the size like a height of 40 and a width of, I think like 100 or something like that. Uh, something else that I forgot to note is you can actually take this and you can drag it out if you want to mess around with that. Then you just lock it in. Center, center. I actually want it centered on the y-axis, but not on the x-axis. I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit, and we're gonna put it as close to the side as we can get. Then we just lock in those constraints. Then something else that we can do here is we can mess around with the corner radius. I forgot to mention this. You can go in here, mess, mess around with the corner radius, lock that in, and also we can add a photo right onto our button if we really wanted to. So now it has an image inside of our button. And now if we were to save and replace this, we should actually be able to see all of those changes being made inside of our application. Let's go ahead and check. So now we should have like a button on the left with our image. Let's see if that worked. Oh, there we go. So uh, it was a very delayed response. I think it's because of the size of the image or something. It was uploading the image to the server. Uh, but it would be nice if that was actually like a progress bar showing that it's uploading. You need to wait a certain amount of time and that would be nice. But for now, as you can see, uh, yeah, we have our button up here. It's an actual button and it has our image the exact way that we planned out right inside our application. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this. I see this as a thing with a whole lot of potential. You can definitely tell that it's an open beta right now, but I think it's something that would help in the future. Just imagine like you're on an airplane ride, you think of an idea and you wanna change the UI. You can just go inside of your, your, your cell phone here and just edit the, the UI on the go or something like that. Oh, I wanna change the image here. I wanna change this here. I wanna make the button a little bit rounded. It just looks a little funny to me. Just go into the application, change it, you're done. Boom. Time is money. And so we wanna make these things done as fast as possible. In order to make this quick application here in which I just put in a button, it was really quick to put in a button with all of this functionality. It's not a bunch of lines of code. 
It's just one line of code and then you edit it in the app. So yeah, I think it's something with a lot of potential and I hope that you guys actually try it out. And if you notice any bugs, errors or anything, I'll leave the contact info for Ben Swift in the description down below. That way you can tell him about these things and hopefully help him along in this process to make a more perfect SDK or a more perfect application. We're all growing together. Anyway, see you in the next one. Why aren't these things working? It's not easy for me. I need